power of prayer and fasting. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The book of Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. If the Bible is yours, underline the word power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, underline the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. The tool of a believer, the Bible says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual host of wickedness in higher places. A believer that walks by sight and not by faith is just a doomed believer. It's a believer that is asleep. A believer that is sleeping doesn't know what is going on around them. They are unaware about the things that is going on around them. They take it for granted that those things that is going on around them, they don't see the importance of the spiritual things they don't see the importance of connecting with the Holy Spirit day in and day out because they see the fact that I am already made whole and the Holy Spirit is upon me but let me tell you something when the Holy Spirit is upon you he gives you power he gives you anointing he gives you the power if the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead if it lives in you it shall quicken your mortal body that means that those that are sleeping it will quicken you so if you claim to have the Holy Spirit then you'll be quickened in the spirit you will not be a confused soul walking around on the surface of the earth but you will have the spirit of God to nudge you out of your slumber are you here with me today glory be to God the Bible says that Jesus spoke these words on the ascension day. We call it the ascension day because it's the day that Jesus ascended into heaven. The Bible says that when Jesus disappeared in the skies, the people went, that was the 12 disciples, went back to Jerusalem. And when they went back to Jerusalem, the Bible says they entered the upper room, say the upper room. In the retreat, I was talking about the upper room and what the upper room is all about. The upper room is the secret place. The upper room is the chambers of holies of holies. It is the place where you seek God face to face. It is the place that you encounter God. It is the place that you commune with God. When, when, when Elijah was complaining on the mountain of complaints, I call it the mountain of complaints. He was on that mountain and was complaining unto God that Jezebel was coming after me. God said that I'm not going to meet you here come to the mountain of the Lord and there I am going to meet you it is in the upper room where the Lord meets you it is in the upper room where the Lord encounters you <laughs> glory be to God and so the Bible says that they went back into the upper room because when the Holy Spirit is going to come, it takes prayer, it takes fasting for the Spirit of God to come upon you. The Spirit of God will not be able to use you without you being flexible. For you to be flexible, it means it goes through prayer and it goes through fasting. Without prayer and fasting, a believer is as hard as a clay, a hard clay that can never be molded. Because he's bent to the things of the physical. He's bent to the things of the flesh. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says that they went back into Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, the Bible says that they prayed in the upper room for a long time. Hallelujah. And as they prayed, the Bible says that they were waiting on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They were waiting on the promise. Say the promise. You see, God promised you that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. Hallelujah. He was talking to the apostles and he was saying that for you to be a witness unto me, you must receive the Holy Spirit. Not in blowing in tongues. Not just in speaking in tongues and saying that the spirit of God is upon me when he is upon you he anoints you to preach the gospel to preach the gospel to the poor and to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free and to release from the darkness the prisoners the Holy Spirit doesn't come upon you for you to sit at home and sleep you're here with me today are you here with me today 
If you look at the Christendom today, the things that is so worrisome in the Christendom is prayer. People are so lazy for prayer. When you call for prayer, many few people just will show up. Only two or three people will show up. Many people will stay at home, but call for a prophetic meeting and you will see that all the crawling people will be coming and they'll be coming with their headgears and will be coming with their suits and they'll be coming with their high heels and they'll be coming with their nice lipsticks and they'll be coming to sit, coming to hear prophecies. But prophecies are promises given by God. But for it to come to pass, it takes prayer.